What's going on everybody? Scott Martin here, Bassmaster Pro. And you know, I've been thinking, you know, with summertime here, everybody's gearing up to go fishing. And this is a great time to start a little mini series, kind of back to the basics, okay? In this video series here, we're gonna cover everything from how to pick the right fishing line to picking the right hooks, a little bit about creature baits, top waters, and everything in between. And that's what this video series is gonna do. It's gonna help you not only make a good decision at the tackle store, but it's also gonna help you make a good decision when you're getting the boat ready and packing all your gear. This video series is presented by Deck. Decked is a storage system for the bed of my truck. You guys have seen me carry this around uh, in the bed of my truck for years now. It's awesome. Keep all my tackle, my tools, jacks, all my different things inside these drawers here. And I can put 2,000 pounds of payload on top. So I have all my tubs of worms and tackle boxes and everything extra on top. Camera gear, of course. And, and it's great. I've got my Lear cap here. This is awesome. And I have my Lear locker up here on the top, which keeps everything good and organized. But the deck system is awesome, guys. We're going to drop a link in the description down below. If you guys are interested in picking out a deck system for your pickup truck, be sure to check the link. They've got one for just about every type of pickup truck you can imagine out there. But anyways, let's get back to it. Now, this particular video here, we're going to dive into creature baits, okay? Creature baits. Let's do it. All right, guys, creature baits. There's lots of different kinds of creature baits to choose from, and they all have a purpose and a time to throw them. We rig them all a little different, but here's some of my favorite ones right here. Of course, the Guggen baits here are awesome. I was a big part of this, designed a lot of these lures. And uh, we're going to dive into this because there's several different kinds. You know, you have, you have uh, baits with a lot of action, some baits with a little bit less action, some baits are a little more compact. And, uh, and so there's different, different things you need to know about all these different creature baits here. So let's dive right into my very favorite one. The, the, one, the one that I'm the most proud of, guys, the Bandito Bug, okay? This was my creation, my brainchild worked hard and hard on this thing. And in my opinion, it is probably the most versatile creature bait on the planet. To be honest with you, if you just said, I only have enough money to buy one pack of worms and I'm going fishing, buy the Bandito Bugs because you can fish them just about in every situation, okay? Let's dive right into this. What is the Bandito Bug? The Bandito Bug is a compact creature bait with a lot of little appendages on it. This one right here is the regular size. We actually have a small one as well, but this right here has all these little appendages, these little feet, which have a patented little kicker on it, so they have a lot of action. So you can leave these connected, okay, and have a bait that has uh, kind of a finesse look to it where it won't kick a lot, or you can pull apart all of these appendages like this, and this bait will have tons of action because all these little legs are flapping through the water. I personally fish it with all of these legs ready to go, you know, disconnected, so you get maximum action. Now, now, why is this bait? This, this is a bait that kind of falls in that category of like a, a beaver. A beaver was came out years ago, and we all fished a beaver, and and then you know we kind of morphed a beaver into some action, and that's kind of how this bandito bug really came to be. It, it's a bait that you can, you know, is really good for flipping and pitching. Okay. It's also really good for Carolina rigs, believe it or not. I've caught a lot of fish on a Carolina rig with the Bandito Bug. It's a great uh, lure for that. Also on a swing head or, or, or some type of uh, big heavy three quarter ounce or half ounce swing head or like a Biffle Bug. Works really, really good on that as well. But those are the ways that I like to do it. Now there's something that I've actually done here uh, down in Florida. I actually have caught some big bass doing it is swimming this thing with just a regular four odd hook. I've actually thrown it out there. It throws pretty good. It's got a lot of salt in it and, and reel it on the surface. Believe it or not, no weight, just the hook only, reel it on the surface. And it, and it just like, it's almost like a topwater frog, right? It makes a lot of commotion. It's the right size. And, and the neat thing about that, if one blows up on it, misses it, you can kind of kill it and it kind of swims down to the bottom. So lots of different ways to, to fish this. Uh, but my favorite way of fishing it is flipping and pitching. Let me show you how I like to rig that up. Standard Texas rig for flipping or pitching or even casting. Now you see me a lot of times use the bobber stop. So I'm going to take, uh, you know, my favorite flipping stick. This is 17 pound line. I'm going to take one of these little bobber stops. I, I like the bobber stops because I'm always fishing around vegetation and I like that weight to kind of stay with the bait. So I'm going to put that bobber stop on there. 
All right, so we've put the barber stop on. That's just gonna prevent that weight from sliding up and down, okay? It's a, it's a great little thing to buy. And they're really inexpensive at the tackle shop. Standard bullet weight here, this is a, a 3 8 ounce. It's probably my most common size, a 3 8 size, sometimes a 5 16 But that's about as low as I'll go. You know, when you're fishing a creature bait like this, you gotta realize that moves a lot of water. Those, those appendages grab a lot of water. Um, you, you gotta up your weight just a little bit. If, if I throw a little eighth ounce on here, it's, it's almost so light that it won't even make the legs kick. So you don't want a super, super light weight like you would maybe with a finesse worm, right? So a, a 5 16 is about as light as I'll go, but most of the time it's a 3 8 So here are the two hooks that I use. This is a TK-130 for my flipping hook or my offset hook, which is a Mag Worm 120, Trocar, of course. Uh, these, these hooks are awesome. They've got the cutting edge point, which is great, super strong, which is even better. Uh, here's, here's the difference, right? If I'm flipping, if I'm pitching like a milfoil real close to the boat, I'm flipping and it's going straight down and I'm lifting it back up, a lot of times I'm going to the regular flipping hook. It just comes out of the plastic a little quicker. I get a little bit better hookup ratio uh, when I'm close to the boat like this with a regular flipping hook. Now, if I'm casting it, okay, if I'm casting it out there, making long casts in the grass, I'll use the Magworm 120 because it's an offset hook and this point is going to lay flat in the bait and it doesn't get snagged up in the grass as much, right? The hook point's not gonna pop out and snag into the grass or the vegetation or the trees or the whatever you're, you're casting to. So on a long cast, uh, if I'm just making long casts, I'm gonna use this offset hook. So that's, that's the two differences there. Again, flipping and pitching, use a flipping hook, of course. Casting around, I'm gonna use the offset hook. So let's rig that up with the offset right now. Standard Palomar knot is what I like, nothing fancy. You know, there's lots of different uh, knots out there to choose from, but the Palomar, day in and day out, can't beat it. I'm gonna slide this bobber stop down. Okay, get everything cinched up good. Now I'm gonna rig this up. Now to rig the Bandito Bug or any of these bigger creature baits, it's kind of the same on everything to be honest with you, is I'm gonna come in to the nose of the bait, right dead center, right dead center, come to the first bend of the hook. See that first bend of the hook? Then I'm gonna come out. So that's as far as I went. You want to know how far to go into the bait, just go to that bend. Then push this up and pull it all the way around. And this eyelet where the line's connected to, I'm going to push that all the way up and I'm going to hide. The bandito bug is going to cover that up. Look at that. That's all I've covered it up. Then I'm going to choke up on that hook, dead center again, dead center. And I'm going to come through the bait and lay it right in the back. Look at that, guys. Perfect deal right there. Cinch that down. Okay, now that's all one bait right there. That, that weight stays connected. That's great again for pitching, flipping, casting, whatever you want to do. Now, if I'm casting it a bunch, I will say this, if I'm casting it a bunch in brush piles offshore and I'm lifting my rod, just kind of working it through the water column, I'll take this bobber stop and I'll push it up. You don't have to take it off, just push it up. That way you've got a little bit more freedom with that weight. As it comes over limbs, the weight will pull down and this will glide down a little bit more subtle. So not that you have to get rid of it. I, I pretty much use a bobber stop on just about everything, but when I'm flipping, pitching and heavy cover, I'll use it like that. Then I can pull it up if I'm in open water and want to cast it around and get a little bit a little bit more of a floating action of this thing kind of dwindling down to the bottom coming through the cover. So that's that's my basic setup, okay? Again, 17 pound P-line. This is my favorite 7.7 seven heavy rod. Uh, it's made it's made by favorite. It's a big sexy series. It's great. Got the Shimano Metanium on this thing. So that's, that is, uh, if you look at my videos, this is what I'm fishing with a lot. This is rigged up on the deck of my boat every single day that I go fishing. This is rigged up right there. So that right there is my creature bait. Now let's dive into a couple other variations of creature baits. Here's another bait right here. This is a, this is a trench hog and, and, it, and it's still a creature bait. And creature bait, again, the category of a creature bait is, is a bait that's kind of like, you don't really know what it is, right? It's a creature, right? I mean, that's why, you know, swim bait imitates a shad, it's kind of called a swim bait. A worm is long and slender, looks like a worm. Creature baits are just kind of all different sizes and shapes and, and they're just kind of different appendages. And this trench hog right here is another really good one. It's a lot skinnier. If you can look at this, kind of like a brush hog, um, this, this bait right here is great for just casting around. It's also great for your Carolina rig fishing as well. And uh, you've got the appendages and you can, you can cut them loose, let them do some work, or you can leave them connected and just have the tails kind of kick. I'm always going to disconnect the tails because I need that action right there. You, you don't want this to be too subtle. This is 
really meant to kick. These legs right here are meant to kick. But this is a great bait uh, for, again, for the swing heads. Kind of the same thing as the Bandito Bug, but I feel like the Bandito Bug, because it's a little bit bigger of a profile, will get, will get a little bit better bites as far as big fish goes. Now, if you're in a pressured area where there's a lot of pressure and you're just not getting bit, you can downsize, and this is a little more finessey, even though you're in the creature bait category still, this bait right here is kind of the, in the finessey side of the creature bait. So that, that bait right there comes in two different sizes. You've got the baby and the big one, right? Pretty cool, a lot of difference there, right? So those are, those are, uh, those are good. I love these right here. Again, for, I probably Carolina rig with these mostly. If I'm flipping, I'm gonna go to the Bandito Bug pretty much 90% of the time. If I'm Carolina rigging, it's a kind of a toss up. I might Carolina rig this one over the Bandito Bug just because it's a longer, slender bait, right? It works, it works really well for Carolina rigs and stuff like that. So that's a great bait as well. That trench hog right there, again, a couple different sizes. Then you dive over into some of these crawdads. This is the Kraken Crawl, guys. Here are the two different sizes in the Kraken Crawl. We've got the, the baby Kraken Crawl and the regular size Kraken Crawl. And, and this, this crawdad right here moves a lot of water. Uh, I, I use it, I will, just regular Texas rig like we do the Bandito Bug, but this bait right here, I'm going to rig it up most of the time on a jig for a jig trailer, okay, or a swim jig. So it's either a swim jig or a regular flipping jig trailer is what I use this mostly for. Um, I'm not going to Carolina rig it too much. It moves, again, it moves a lot of water. So if you if you are fishing stained water, if you're fishing an area where the water is, is a little off color and you're just trying to make a little bit more uh, of a presence with that bait, this is a great choice because again, with all that water moving, it's good. Out there on those deep ledges, like at Kentucky Lake and some of those places, I've caught a lot of fish on these jigs, stroking these jigs up and down off the bottom, like a 5 8 football jig, stroking it up and letting this crack and crawl. A lot of action coming back down. So that's pretty much uh, my go-to when I'm, again, swimming a jig, or flipping a jig, I use a crack and crawl. Again, I will flip it and pitch it on a regular Texas rig, but I would say nine times out of 10, it is rigged up on the back of some type of Guggen jig. Speaking of jig trailers, this is one that we've made. It is strictly for jig trailers. Check this thing out, the rattling chunk, okay? Basically, it's a crack and crawl, but it's, it's trimmed down on the front. Uh, a lot of times what we did before with this is we would bite off a segment of this crack and crawl. So basically we made a smaller, version that is strictly for a trailer. This right here is a rattling chunk, but check it out guys. When I say rattling, listen to it. That's good, huh? Comes with a rattle built inside, which is really unique to the to, the, to any of the soft plastics to have a rattle already built in. Uh, really, really good deal there. And, and again, swim jig, um, regular flipping jig, it's a trailer. But I have actually seen, and I haven't done this yet, but I have seen a lot of photos on the internet of people fishing because uh, they're tagging us all the time. People just standard Texas rigging that thing. Just literally, you're gonna have to downsize your hook a little bit, probably do like a three-aught, but just f flipping it into the cover, you know, catching them on a regular standard Texas rig, which is a great idea because again, it already has the rattle inside. So it's a really a multi-purpose trailer here. You can just, again, use it for a trailer or again, flip it. Um, you know, into heavy cover. So really those are your, those are your three or four different styles of creature baits that we have in the Guggen line. And those are the three or four different ways I like to fish them. And just kind of keep that in mind. You know, the next time you're at the tackle shop, or you're gearing up, ready to go, you'll understand kind of what to do with these things. Now, the last thing I'd like to discuss is colors, right? <clears throat> so you look at all these colors, your green pumpkins and your watermelon reds are my, is, are my clear water colors, right? I throw those probably most of the time in clear water. And then when I'm in a little bit more stained water, and either muddy water or stained, when I mean stained, kind of if it reminds you of like Coca-Cola looking, you know, kind of red or tannic, a lot of times down here in Florida in the marshes, you have that color. Or if you're fishing a natural lake, or maybe close to where you are, you'll have that tannicky water. A lot of times June bugs or your black and blues will work really well. Um, those are my two go-to shades, right? Your naturals or your darker black and blue June bug type stuff. And, and you know, but look, listen, it's not a hard, fast rule. Experiment with it. I, I'm telling you, I have, I've had some really cool things over the years where I've, you know, fished in really clear water and put on a June bug or a black and blue and absolutely destroy them because it's something maybe those fish aren't used to seeing. Maybe on that lake near your house, everyone's throwing watermelon red and green pumpkin. 
you throw a black and blue, all of a sudden those fish are like, okay, that's different. I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat that, it looks really good. The other thing too is don't be afraid to mismatch your trailers. On your swim jigs or on your flipping jigs, let's say I have a green pumpkin swimming jig, I might put a black and blue jig trailer on the back of that. You don't have to match it up exactly where it's all green pumpkin throughout or all black and blue throughout. You can kind of mismatch it a little bit. I've actually had really good results by doing that. So guys, those are the basics on creature baits. Hopefully these tips will help you kind of make a good choice next time again you're at the tackle shop or you're getting your trip ready for a little fishing. You know, 17 pound line is probably my go-to line size. If I was gonna say, I'm gonna have a rod rigged up for creature baits, 17 pound P-line tactical is my go-to line. A seven and a half foot favorite heavy flipping stick is gonna be my go-to rod. So that's your basic setup. So if you're gonna go do some of this guys, check all that stuff out. Be sure to drop some comments down below. Let me know what you would like to hear. And, uh, and let me know what's your favorite color. What's your favorite color? Because a lot of times there's these little special little variations of a green pumpkin, right? Now green pumpkin purple, green pumpkin blue, some cool little things. And those are always fun to hear what your favorite colors are. So let me know what they are. And thanks for watching this series, guys. Give me one last favor, if you don't mind. Uh, share the video out. Share the video out to everybody that you know that's going fishing this summer and let them know what's going on. And I appreciate all the support, guys. We'll see you soon. Bam!